Welcome everyone back to Shiftcast. This is episode 19. Super excited to talk to you guys today. The RLCS season has concluded. We had our final regular season tournament. All we've got left is the London Major and the World Championship. And we still got some exciting stuff on the line. Not everything is set in stone just yet. There are still some teams waiting on results at the Major to determine who will represent what region in the World Championship. Uh, I mean, so let's get right into it. Teams that you guys are most excited to watch in London. Oh. Almost all of them. Yeah, well, what we're gonna do here, we've got we've got honestly. a few different we've got a few different uh, titles or or categories, and each of us are mm -hmm. gonna give we're gonna give our own uh, selection for that. This is all obviously surrounding the London Major. So uh, a team that you're most excited to watch there, I'll go first. Oxygen. I mean, it's not even close. You know, obviously I'm invested. I am biased. I am signed to the team, but paid actor. Some might paid say. actor. Some might say, mm -hmm. but uh. They are a team that I think a lot of people are, are interested in watching because oh. there is a, a chance that Oxygen can actually take the world spot from Carmine Corp. Now, it's going to be a tough road. Uh, they have to make top two, so you know they're aiming very high. But I think the team, you know, with, with, with what we saw with Gentlemates last time, I think anything is possible as long as you have that ability. And I think they do have that ability. Maybe they're not there yet. Maybe nobody, uh, maybe very few are going to predict them, which I think is fair. But, uh, you know, there's an outside chance. So I'm excited to watch and see what they could do. Rudy, can I ask you a question? Yeah. On a, on a larger scale past yeah. that, do you think there could be an issue where Oxygen make a miracle run? They, they Not a miracle run, but they, they get their top eight win yeah. and they get a big win in the top four and they're in the world championship. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there could be an issue of the team almost in, a, in the same way that Furia it felt like? almost were on an adrenaline high and it just kind of dropped and they lost those four straight games to BDS after going up 2-0 and having that massive win over Moist. Do you think, think if so. they walk into the final they and they're like, we made Worlds, let's go, we did yeah. it, no one thought yeah. we could do it, then they just got focused? I think that is possible. I think that's possible for Oxygen or, or, or any other team because it's just, it sounds crazy, but that semifinal match is going to feel heavier. And, mm -hmm. and it's ridiculous because it's not the grand finals. The grand finals should be the biggest thing. But when your whole season is riding on that win and your, you know, your your chance to get to worlds is riding on that win, I, I could definitely see that happening, especially if um and I assume it will be the case, whoever the opposing team is is not gonna be like they're already locked in. If it's BDS yeah. or Mates or Vitality or Furia or Falcons, mm -hmm. G2, Gen G, who I think is those are most of the team the squads that we're thinking is gonna make it to the finals. If one of them, they're all locked in, like they're all set. So they're not gonna have that, like you said, that huge emotional roller coaster. But I'm going to say this too. I think a lot of it just depends on those guys' personalities because they could just use it as, as like, like you said, adrenaline's pumping and, and, and they just keep rocking and rolling. So I think a lot of that comes down to the individual personalities of the team. Um, you know, if they're kind of mama mentality, job's not finished. You know, like we, sure, we accomplished what we came here to do, but there's, you know, there's one step further we can go and we want to do that. Um, mm -hmm. Or are they more, I mean, I don't, I don't have a, an opposing example, but are, are they more along the lines of just like, so grateful to have accomplished uh, the tough, you know, the tough task of going top two. I don't know. It just depends on, on what those guys have, uh, you know, as, as personalities from the competitive standpoint. But like you said, it definitely, that definitely is a scenario where a team could fizzle out once they get to the grand finals. You're assuming they get there though, because you just named an entire list of teams <laughs> that you, you'd expect to make right. it that far. Right. And, and they are not the favorites. It's doable. No. It's absolutely doable, but they're not the favorites to make it that far. So I have to see it before I believe it. If they're there, I, th I think if they've even made it to the semifinals, they should have all the confidence in the world to actually go through and, and make it happen. But uh, yeah, they first have to get there. It is going to be really, really tough. Yeah. Well, the team I'm looking at, I'm really excited to see. I talked about them. I said last week I thought they were the team to beat as Team Falcons because I feel like mm. there are certain teams that I feel like when you when they come into a tournament, it almost feels like this is their shot. This is the point where if they're going to get one as a team, as a roster, not individually as players, but as a roster, it's probably going to be this one. I felt that way about FaZe at San Diego last year where it's like, they're not going to have, like, they're an older roster. You know, there's been issues before with these players. Like, they finally have it clicking. If it if it's not going to happen now, it's probably never going to happen, right? I think Gen G was probably the same when they won the fall major in Rotterdam. 
Um, to me, it's not on that level, but there are so many incredible teams in the world right now that you really have to be on form for the whole weekend and really know that you have the ceiling of a land winner. And to me, Falcons just check every box. They play such an exciting style of Rocket League. You know, no more, even though it's still part of the game, that sort of low 50 meta you'd hear about from Mina teams is, is really not the case anymore. Um, they're, they're hot. They're f- very, very fast. They're able to adjust to mm-hmm. different play styles. Um, and they have like just the brilliant individual players. Um, they were the most fun to me team to watch last land. And I think that's going to continue at this point. Yeah, exactly. That's the main thing I think for me as well, that they were so good. Everyone knew they were good, but they really showed up in Copenhagen. So that's what makes them such an exciting team to watch mm-hmm. now. And of course, you have all the history as well, right? Mm-hmm. With yeah, uh, almost did with, the, what no one's ever done before, right? Is that yeah, expansion region team? Yeah, and making it to second place in in the Copper Box in in London. Mm-hmm. I mean, that that's where they've done it before, and that might be where they do it again. But the most recent winners of yeah. a LAN event are, for me, a very exciting team to watch. Gentlemates, because because you feels didn't think like they'd be there. Well, hey, <laughs> wow! That makes what a them, switch! What a demonic switch up for you. Definitely makes them an that. exciting team to watch right now. <laughs> um, defying all expectations, nah, they they were they always had a really good chance of being yeah. there and and being good. The thing is, it seems like BDS is definitely on top of Europe right now, yeah. but maybe the European teams aren't as strong as they were in the lead up to Copenhagen, uh, as dominant, I would say. Uh, but we've seen Gentlemates be the weakest of the bunch in the first split and level up to, to a really different level on LAN. So if they can do that again, I mean, I feel like there's a chance for them. There's a chance for a team like Team Falcons, but absolutely for Gentlemates too. And they're, they're going to be the defending champions, right? It's not they're not the world champions, but they're gonna be the defending international champions that everyone wants to be just because of that. Yeah. Yeah, they're the only roster, if you think about it, they're the only roster that can say they've done it, right? They're gonna have the confidence, the three of them together, of course, and other other land winners, but there's only one gr- like actual roster that's won anything already so far because there was so much swapping around. Well uh, I guess vitality. vitality I yeah. I about that. But yeah, there is that right? for that it's so far away, like I wonder, I do wonder if the mate's commitment to team ball allows them to avoid the sort of individual skill debuff that comes with LAN or it seems to come with LAN. Um, and, you know, it, it begs the question after seeing them have another like strong but not dominant split. Were they just simply playing to their normal level because they have a, they, they're for whatever reason, more adapted to the LAN environment and everyone else was playing worse, right? Like to me, that's always been why, like to me, I, I watched Seiko and I'm like, this guy treats, you know, RLCS like a job. He doesn't seem to care very much about winning. I mean, he obviously cares, but like he's not emotionally invested uh, visibly the way other other players are. And I, I look at the way that maybe affects the team. Like, hey, this is just another game. This is just another best of seven that we have. We've had to play a million times in the same format. Mm. Um, so well, I think they should have the confidence, all the confidence in the world, because they've won the last LAN. We have indeed very few teams, very few rosters who've done it, uh, apart from Fratality and Gentlemates. But they're the ones basically in control from the start if they can make that happen, right? Yeah. Code not... Rose, it's our time. Yeah. I'm coming back. The return. Um, but on top of that, you know, there are teams we're excited to see for like the playstyle reasons or like the narrative, but we also got to talk about teams we're excited to watch because we think they could make a little more noise than most people think. The sleeper, the legendary sleeper. There's always a sleeper team. The mates were the sleeper team of Copenhagen. A lot of people think that thought they might even miss top eight. They were a round five team. Instead, they went 6-0. They beat the number one and number two seeds in Europe, North America, and the number one seed in MENA. So for you guys, who's your sleeper team? Maybe not to win the whole thing like the mates did, but to perform a lot better than people think they are. Pretty. Um, I think Team Secret. I think they are going to be uh, just very generally, so kind of like community-wide, 
very generally underrated just because there hasn't really been much of a story internationally about that squad. And I think Ninjas would have been similar. I think Crew would have been similar. It's just really been, you know, viewing from afar and then listening and, and seeing the, the you know, Twitter and Reddit and everywhere else. It's really just been such a heavy focus on fury and complexity. They made the first international major. And then the whole second split almost felt like, well, can complexity hold the spot? It wasn't mm-hmm. so much about like who's going to take it. It was more about, and it, even when complexity was st- like significantly behind uh, moving into that third event, it wasn't so much shining light on the other teams. It was more like, well, can complexity grab it back? Um, mm-hmm. And so I think, I think secret is going to, I think they're going to be better than a lot of us expect. I think, you know, one thing that you mentioned, Michael, talking about Falcons, um, or, or one thing that I think is pertinent to them, and, and it will be to this roster as well. I think defense has just become very, very important. Um, all these players and all these teams in this era have very potent offense. They have very potent attacking. All these players, at like one, two, and three. You know, I know that there mm-hmm. are better players. Like there's, there's best players on a team. Role, uh, you know, role players, whatever. But everyone is so capable. Everyone has flip reset bag. Everyone can can pull things up high. They can, uh, you know, direct fifties back to teammates. They 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 have a deep offensive bag at this point. And I think that to me, when I watch, that is what kind of separates the good from excellent. Is those teams because you're going to be put on defense. You're going to be put back there with low boost. You're going to have to sustain defense for extended periods of time. Obviously, you don't want to, but it's going to happen when you're playing elite elite talent. And so one of the things that I like about Secret is they've always got that defensive rock in KV1, similar to uh, Rawas on Falcons. And it's just a player that you Daniels know well. you know for sure um, they're going to have that back line locked down. They're going to be consistent and solid. And I think that's a really, really important thing to bring to a LAN environment. Hmm. Uh, so I, I got Secret. I think they're yeah. going to be a little bit slept on by the community. And I like that, uh, that defensive I, foundation. I don't know if they're... If they're underrated per se, but maybe I just rate them higher than the community. I don't know. But uh, what I like about Team Secret is that they're not losing to Erased. Right. Here, yeah. <laughs> what is that? Um, I was going to say quickly our boy, friend of the show, one time guest host of the show, Bel Air, actually pointed out on Twitter a while back that for as good as KV1 has been on defense always, I, the, the reason that Secret has looked a lot better is actually because he's added a lot of offense to his game. I got some stats for you straight mm-hmm. from Bel Air. Shout out to Bel Air. Um, the last three events, <clears throat> the final three qualifiers of the season, three of the four highest scoring performances by KV1 in his RLCS career. The, oh, the wow. biggest offensive numbers. Yeah. On top of that, he's one of only four players in Sam shooting over 27% on over three shots per game. So he's getting shots up and he's scoring. Plus, he's still got that KV1 defense. Hootie, I think if there's a player, especially that you could be looked at as like the sneaky player that comes out with their the uh, their stock risen the highest among the international community that maybe doesn't watch as much Sam, yeah. I think you're on to something with KV1. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, I don't have Team Secret making it that far, but they might just be peaking at the right time. Mm-hmm. They seem to be, you know, playing the best they have this season right now. So they might just be peaking. But I have another team who took the second seed spot from another team that we would have expected to be there, x Real one and that is Twisted Minds. That is my sleeper team, because I feel like even in the first split, Twisted Minds were a team that people heavily underrated because everyone was just looking at Team Falcons and Real one and now they have Ahmad, who was there in second place in the grand finals of London last major. It was in the copper box. So now he's the one who needs to do it again. Grand finals is may- maybe a little bit far for a team like Twisted Minds, but I think they are a dark horse for the tournament. For me personally, I got team How. Two three last, two three last tournament, right? There were two three. Had to run into G two in that round five. We knew that wasn't doing well, but beat rule one. No one thought they were going to beat rule. Well, some people probably, but the majority of people thought they weren't going to beat rule one. 
And I think they've been able to show a continued level of dominance that shows that they're taking things very seriously, that they want this top eight, right? Because you can coast, basically had Worlds wrapped up by the end of the first split with how many points they had and how weird the rest of the region had been. Um, and uh, instead, no, they've continued to put their keep their foot on on the region's neck. And you know, I love me some OCE after dark, some late night OCE. It's the it's the best thing you can watch in RLCS, in my opinion, for the online portion because it's so silly. But the most boring OCE matches are power OCE matches because yeah, they true. whoop everybody. And you can only ask them that for for to to sort of. To be able to dominate a region like that for a lot, that long, it shows a level of professionalism yeah. that Furia, obviously playing a tougher region, but they struggled at times, right? Losing series that you think they should have won. Um, Falcons have shown it. And it's, I, they, like I said, I think they're my number one team right now. So I think this is a team that, you know, if, if, if there's more of a weird Swiss, we had a very normal Swiss last time. There's more of a weird Swiss where the round five matchups, they end up playing a team like Secret, Twisted Mind, Space Station, OG. I wouldn't be that surprised to see them make the top eight, I really believe. Top eight even? I'm not sure. I think they did really, really well in Copenhagen. I think that first split major is as far as they can go. I I just did the <laughs> bracket predictions. The, you know, I think these are good sleeper picks because Jens has said that he doesn't believe in either of them. So they've got to yeah. be, I yeah. mean, that's a good, I that's, that's precisely what we're looking for, asleep, isn't it? Hootie, Hootie, he is <laughs> yeah. so far asleep. He's There's Z's coming up from yeah, his I head. Mean, it is almost <laughs> 1 a.m. here, so maybe exactly. maybe that's it. But I, think, I have but them I, going I mean, I agree. I think all five again. For, I mean, really, I think all three of these squads, I, I would imagine that all of us kind of feel like top eight would be kind of exceeding expectations yeah. for these teams, you know, getting out of that Swiss stage. I, I mean, I, I look, I think Secret could pull something crazy, but I don't really think they're going to go top four or better. Uh, but I think a top eight would be surprising, and I think a lot of people would, and, and similar for Twisted Minds and Power, I think a lot of people would celebrate those teams making it into the bracket. Yeah, I All think right. you look at those teams, and then you look at uh, SSG and OG, and mm -hmm. those are like sort of the round five right. Swiss teams you expect to go. Yeah. Yeah, I, I made the bracket earlier. Uh, just to see how the Swiss stage would play out with my predictions. And it would see Twisted Minds and Power meeting up in round five. Mm. And I have Twisted Minds over Power there. So that's how they go out in round five. I don't see them beating right? any you, you of the have, other round five teams, though. So. Yeah, you, you have the, the the four from Europe. You have the big, the kind of big two from NA. Yeah. And, yeah. Then you have the, and then you have the Falcons and Furia. That's eight teams. No. So it's like... You have, then you have this whole other group of teams, and it shows how deep these lands right. are, especially because there's not that many spots. That SSG OG Twisted Minds secret power, that's five more teams where it's like they probably all feel like they should be able to get a top eight if they perform yeah. well, and yet they have to knock out one of those eight teams to make it. Like, that's not easy at all. Right. That's a very, very... Especially... Uh, it's just crazy. Especially because Swiss is, you know, it's pretty good at you know, allowing the top eight in, whereas like a, as opposed to say like a double Elin bracket where yeah. things may just line up in their favor. Yeah. yeah but you can get some crazy round five You just rattled off five strong squads that yeah. if any of those top eight are not on their A game, they're, exactly. they're, yeah. they're, they're definitely going to drop a series. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, I look at SSG at, uh, at Boston. If you look at SSG at Boston, they played the two teams that won the last two majors in their top 12 matches. They played yeah. Carmine Corbin up around two, and they played Gen G in lower round three yeah. or lower round two. So they didn't even get to day three, and they had to play at that point yeah. the number one seeds in both regions. Right. And it's like, you know, all the format talk and the single Elam stuff and all that. Swiss is actually really good at getting us the best. It, yeah. And, you know, it'll be interesting. It is, but in ground five, things can still go awry a little You're bit. right. Absolutely. Because in my bracket, which is just an example, it can go 100 million different ways. But in my example, we have a matchup in round five between just minds and power, which means that Gen G and Oxygen are playing each other. Mm -hmm. In that matchup, yep. you, you know, there's going to be a team that I would expect in the top eight not mm -hmm. making it there. But if you, if you toss one of those early matches, like a, yeah, like a exactly. one-zero -oh ma like -oh match I mean, or a one-one yeah. match, you're 
Sw Swiss does not eliminate. You, you don't even have to toss it because in my bracket, Genji only loses to Furia and BDS. I mean, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Swiss does not eliminate like upset scenarios or, or like that where they, you know, run into two strong teams and it's not a bad loss. But um, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Well, let's, ch um, let's bounce to the next one. So this is team uh, teams that you think will or could have uh, an underperformance. Ooh, we're gonna be Debbie Downer here. I'll go uh, first. Why, why, I'll go why first because I think. Start? Why doesn't Yen talk about which okay, one we, he picked? Are huh? we gonna rip him? Are we gonna get him, Michael? He's a hater. Who, who did you say was? Who was your sleeper no, pick? I'll go again? ahead and say it with your lips because I know you put that there because <laughs> I put it there. I, I actually, know you did it. You're I so actually, not slick, dude. You're so not slick. Michael, Michael, Michael. I actually <laughs> agree on the, hater, the other teams. If we go down the list, um, spoilers no, for I know, the but next you, segment. So you were like, oh, my, you know, you know, you know, you know what you so said? Much. You said, oh, I agree too much with Michael. My shit must be trash. <laughs> so I have to make sure we have some content. No, I go through that later. I did it in, in chronological order. But yes, I have power as my team that might underperform. What is under so what is underperforming for power? That's the thing. That's why I was conf right. like, confused about. Yeah, I mean, it is very tough to say. I, I believe people have expectations of them going round five now. Mm -hmm. okay. I think that's that the least. Sense. I think that's the least that they should be able to do. Not maybe not should do, but should be able to do is mm -hmm. making it to round five, and then it will be hard to put them into the top eight, but. I feel like power has been so dominant in sure. their own region that yeah. a lot of people, especially now that we've seen that they can actually kind of compete internationally as well, they feel like power should be should be decent to make it to that round five to have a chance at that top eight. And I feel like last time they made it happen, but it, it was a struggle. It was a hard-fought hard fought battle. They made it happen, sure. But I can see them not getting as good of a result this time around. So that's me picking your sleeper team. Of course. <laughs> Dana snakes this podcast, as I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, well, I'm going to go with Furia. We'll shake hands on the next couple, I'm sure. Sure. Uh, I'm going to go with Furia. We ha I had this uh, term that I would use at certain episodes. But I kind of dropped it, but I'm bringing it back. Silly team. Mm -mm. Furia, the last four events, three of the last four events, to me, are showing like strong silly team symptoms. Yeah. Let me walk you through it. Split one major. 3-0 on the, in the Swiss. Looking like the best Furia we've ever seen. Yan is back. Rufino is the South American rise. Lost, is he, is he the, the most mechanical player in the world? They get dog walked by Zen and Radosa. And it doesn't even look competitive, right? And an amazing top eight, they have the lone non-competitive series. Now we go to the first regional, they clean up. I'm like, okay, Fury is back. They had a one bad series, it's whatever, they're still a top team. They won the last three regionals the same. They lose to Ninjas in Pajamas, which are a good team. But if, like, if you want to be considered a, you know, a team that is a serious threat to win a LAN, which I only believe there are three right now, you don't lose to uh, the third best team in South America. I'm sorry. It just doesn't happen. And then you lose to a team that hadn't made the bracket in a regional in your top four match. So Anyways. to me, the, 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 if I look at the team that won last split, I look at, I look at Gentlemates, what defined them throughout their run at the major was consistency. They were able to play the same way and stay calm and, 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 and get it done while other teams were panicking. Furia to me has not shown me that they have this sort of mental approach to the game that they can avoid these silly results that they keep having because I'm watching the Falcons win every regional. I'm watching G2 win four regionals in North America. I'm watching BDS win back-to-back -back regionals in Europe, which is not easy. It's all, I would say just as hard as winning four regionals in North America. And I, was, I can't, I think for a team that's been put in this class with these other teams, I think that, I don't think they've been showing it. I think that they are far more inconsistent. And I think they rely a lot on home runs and they really struggle to hit the single. 
and 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 sometimes you just need to hit the single you know for my non baseball watchers it means they take a ton of risks and they don't they sometimes will pass on the safe play to make the the big play and it kills them right it killed them against vitality it's killed them against other teams so what do you need get on base you just need to get up listen we can't you can recreate yan in the aggregate right i mean i maybe actually tried to do that but it didn't work but anyway you can like, if, if you have no idea what we're talking about, yeah. you should watch the movie Moneyball. Fantastic movie, one of the greatest sports movies of all time. Brad Pitt, bad person apparently, but very good. Apparently, um, allegedly, I should say. Anyway, uh, Furia, I love you. I love watching Peak Furia. They are, you know, the most exciting team in the world to watch. So, so what would you say is a underperformance for them? What I don't think they they're going to make the top eight. Right. Okay. I, I I I did a bracket. I do not have them in the top eight. I have Space Station instead of them in the top eight. Okay, okay. Yeah. What about, you, what about you? Hoodie. What about that? Because we've <laughs> both, we both have teams that are kind of like somewhere in the middle, yeah. right? Yep. I, I, yeah, most people a, would say Furia would be like a top eight, sure. Power on the verge of that. Mm -hmm. what, what, what is happening here, Hoodie? So I have, uh, well, first, I'm going to say what happened. So I read the who's got the best chance to underperform, not the smaller title of team you think will underperform. Um, so there's the lens, but I, I think it's, you know, it's fairly close. But what I'll say is uh, I select the BDS and it's obviously not due to their performance. As, like Michael said, they've gone back to back um, regional champions, but I think that is why the chance for them to underperform is there. Uh, you have crazy high expectations. I think, Anything below top four at this land, people are yeah. going to be disappointed in BDS. And the reality is, look, we have talked about Carmen Court won three events, right? Falcons won three events. They went perfect. Furia and uh, it was Fury and, Fal uh, Fury and Falcons went three and zero through Swiss. No, Furia and Gentlemates. Fury and Gentlemates three and zero through Swiss. And so you, you're, you know, they're they're whether it's through Swiss their performance at the land or you know multiple regional victories in form going to it, we have seen. You can expect excellence and perfection from a team like Carmine Corp. You can expect it from a Furia, but it doesn't matter. You just have to beat that team on the day. And BDS can lose to six, seven, eight, nine other teams that are at this event. And I'm not saying that I'm predicting them to, but when, them, when, when they walk into this event with two back-to-back -back victories in Europe and they've been playing very good Rocket League, mm -hmm. the expectations have risen. You know, we, 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 want, we walked away from the last event and they were top eight. And I think even then we felt kind of like deflated, like, ah, man, they, sh they, they could have and maybe should have gone to at least top four. And so now, you know, what I'm saying is if they're not top four, I think it's for certain an underperformance yeah. coming on the back of two regional victories. Fair enough. Um, but for our residential fence sitter, it's quite a hot take. However, there is... <laughs> There is some historical precedent for this. Oh, yeah. Team BDS Moon, have not a bombed guy. out <laughs> of a major. And it was in London, wasn't it? Right. 06. That is the thing about BDS. But, We've now seen it three times, mm -hmm. where kind of, or almost every time, because the major they won, they didn't win a regional. Right. And then they, you know, they had another, I think they won one regional in the winner split, got perfect swept out of the tournament by phase in top eight. And they win two regionals, go 06 out, win the world championship. Right after winning the world championship, yeah. miss two lands, yeah. Yeah. then don't win a single uh, regional in the, and only make one final in Europe in the spring. Make two uh, world, land finals back to back. Completely remake their roster. Look on par with Carmine Court for most of the split, and just like a couple things here, a couple things there. Then losing the top eight. So you really, I think we've learned with Monkey Moon, the the online and the land have a new, almost yeah. no correlation. Yeah. It's just yeah. whatever happens. And, right? and you know, I just want to reiterate again, like not even. I mean, you, you guys have, and thank you, come to my rescue there, given me a couple of anecdotes about BDS specifically, but I think we can zoom out even further. Like, it's just, it's a crazy game, and we've got eight or nine really high-level teams, and I, I love what you said earlier, Michael, is the ceiling, right? Mm -hmm. The ceiling of these teams, I think, is very similar for those top eight. Yeah. Now, are yeah. they all going to play at their ceiling? Probably not, but if the team that <laughs> BDS comes up against in the quarterfinals is at that ceiling, then it's going to be a close series. Uh, so I think that is kind of the angle that I was looking at. It's like the expectations are so high that if they, you know, if they're not on their A game, 
they could be eliminated top eight. And uh, like I said, that would be a who, who who has the best chance to underperform? Yeah. Like power power underperforming is gonna have, in my opinion, it's gonna have to be zero and three. One, three, I think I one think. and three. I people are gonna look and be three, like, yeah. eh, they could have done better, but yeah, whatever. I think I if you so. look at the eight, there's eight teams that make the bracket and three teams that make round five. I feel like if power isn't one of those three teams, people are gonna be like, OC sucks. We li- we were lied to. Oh, right? Okay, I don't disagree, but I also think like there's a huge percentage of the community that just doesn't expect anything from OC. <laughs> Even if they've gone six for six, even if they've been good, it, like if they go, I, I feel confident. If Chiefs go zero and three, and Power goes one and three, I don't think people are going to be super surprised. You're wrong. <laughs> I almost got in here, and I almost said Power is gonna is gonna like have like a legendary like run, but Dude, I didn't. Look, I something like that would be awesome. It would be exactly legendary. Like my, my, all I'm trying to say maybe? is, and I'm not trying to down power. I'm just saying, when you look at what is expected from them, a one and three, two and three performance is probably in the realm of what we expect. A top eight is incredible. O and three is an underperformance. With BDS, yeah. anything, anything outside of top four is going to be. See, and that I is, disagree. That's kind of the angle that I was uh, coming at from this, because obviously BDS I, is, I mean, frankly, probably the favorite at this point. Yeah, Hootie, I, 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 I don't disagree that you're, you're definitely right about the general public thinking that but to me i think if you make top eight i think it's a success i'm gonna be honest because for bds the way that swiss is seated it's like nuts no but like what if bds here's the thing right bds could go 3-0 in swiss and play g2 who went 3-2 and weren't on their game like literally last like the literal last LAN. then if if they lose 4-3 to g2 and g2 wins the LAN. Then you're like, well, it wasn't a, a failure, right? It's like the the, the number itself. It's know. not as much of. of I don't of, think uh, they're gonna be. I don't know. I know what you're saying, but it. I don't I know think what I you're agree. saying. Yeah. If if BDS go three zero, then lose to the winner of the LAN in the quarterfinals. Okay, in but a that, really that tough okay. series. Yeah. Okay. If if it's the winner of the LAN and they play them in seven, sure. Yeah, because context matters. That's why Gen G was the second best team in COVID. They weren't. They weren't though. They weren't. They weren't. <laughs> Oh, and and, and I don't think people walked away from the land being like, all right, that was a great performance from Genji. I do, because I believe in my dog. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. You, what yeah, have you not Jack's said that? Thumb, <laughs> Jack's thumb grip fell off. <laughs> oh, would have won the land if Jack's but, thumb grip fell About off. Bauer, if they go one and three, I would think that's, that's underperforming. I yeah, think I they totally really agree. do need to make so it there, there's five. there's one, there's only one result that's acceptable for Bauer, and that's round five. No, it's top four, which is going to happen. Anyway, that's, you know, <laughs> I, I we really can fool think, around I mean, this a, all day. There's a very good chance that they run into like gladiators and and chiefs, you know. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Power should beat those two teams, and then they did oh. already in round five. So anyway, let's move on. <laughs> okay, so speaking of gladiators and chiefs, <laughs> let's talk about the biggest uh, the the teams with the biggest uphill climb. Yeah. Uh, which teams do you guys think are going to go o three? Just, just vacation time is what I like to call it because you show up, you twiddle your thumbs a little bit on a controller for like three hours, and then like you know off to Big Ben or whatever. Hoodie. The, the, the thing. I, so Hoodie, three, regularly. two, one. Mobula, Mobula and, gladiators. and gladiators. Now I want to say this, and I, will, I mean, geez, both of them. So we got a two-thirds yeah. European team representing APAC, and we've got a <laughs> Three thirds team representing SSA. Uh, We're EU haters. That's what we are. They, they, I've EU. Well, what I was going to say what is, I think these shit. are going to be. <laughs> these are not going to be as easy, and which sounds really rude. I don't, I don't mean it that way, but it's it's going to be tougher matchups for the squads that they come up against. But I do still think that they're probably the two weakest teams. Um, I, I see. You know, I, I, Chiefs. I think is is fair enough as well to, to throw down there in the 0 and 3 1 and 3 expectation um but gladiators it, look I, I think if they had been what i thought they would be with though straight out of the gate then maybe i wouldn't have put them in this 0 and 3 right. but there's a little bit of shakiness it's up and down and sure right. they got a little bit better as the, as the uh, split went on but I, i'm i'm not totally sold yet and i mean i i, I I don't like to go down this road of negativity, but I'm not going to lie. I just hope Mobula goes 0-3. Yeah. There is well, no other expectations have... for them. 
I, I also have them, uh, Team Mobula 03, uh, because they are the uh, somewhere between the 42nd and 58th best European team in the world. I had this idea the other day. I would love your opinion on this. This is a bad idea for like actual competitive, but I think it'd be kind of fun and a silly way to keep people from uh, doing this import stuff or like playing from a different region. I think they should be that if you um, are not a resident, like you're not living there for the entire split, or you know, you're a, you're a majority import team, right? Such as Team Mobula, and you qualify for the land. You there should be a playoff between the t- the region, the team that was most likely like first off the land in the region you came from, and you for that land spot. Because if you're gonna steal the land spot, <laughs> so like should, so Luna, Galaxy. Have <laughs> Luna Galaxy versus Team Mobula, and if Luna Galaxy wins, they go to land. I love that. Thoughts? I think that's a great idea. That yeah, is that'll I be wonderful. You no one's going. I mean, maybe they'll go for the money. Maybe they'll go for the money. That that's a that's probably what they'll go for. But like, at least it'd be funny to watch them like be like, guys, we're gonna go to land, and then they have to play like peaking atomic, and they just get smoked. <laughs> anyway, not my point. That, that would uh, be actually, a fantastic deterrent. Yeah, it would be hilarious. Just that like would be a Spanish yeah. Civil War too. Yes, exactly. <laughs> VK Salem versus Atomic. What year is it for land? You know? <laughs> yeah. um, no, but. I, I'm going to put Chiefs here instead of Gladiators, and this is why. Uh, I think if Vert played in OCE, he would be like on a team that was like the step below power sort of level. Um, and I think if though played in in uh, in in OCE, he'd be like the top five player. Um, so to me, like that team to me would pretty clearly be the second best team in OCE, and I think they will meet in like an O2 round. Um, and, or sorry, yeah, in the in the O3 round. O2 round? Whatever O2. one makes you go to O2. O2 yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think, because I think Gladiators will steal a game, and I think Chiefs will go O6. Uh, I think, you know, in that se- in that lower round one, they'll play like an O, like uh, Gladiators will play like an OG or a Twisted Mind, and they'll get like a, a Mickey game three or a Mickey game one. And then they'll be able to play an O6 Chiefs team. Um, and then I think the other O2 team that'll probably be one of those kind of, you know, second or third, fourth seeds will um smoke will smoke uh mobula very badly so yeah that's uh th- that's my reasoning yeah no I, I think then you're underrating chiefs but uh oce2 has given me no reason to believe i i think i'm i'm with yens but i think a lot of it is stems from hopium cuz there's the uh storyline there i want to see them because if they it's two and three, right? If they go to the if they go to round five, they take the spot. Yeah. So I want to see them in the like I want to see them in round four. Okay, I see you. That's At fair. least just for That's the entertainment reason. purpose, you know. Yeah, totally. <laughs> no, I get that. It would be cool, but I'm I just I hadn't even thought of that. I'm just thinking about where we place the teams, and I, I still think Chiefs is a more solid rounded team than a team with foe who has yeah not been able to lift that team up to the heights that you'd expect gladiators to be at with a I mean, player of his caliber elevate well <laughs> they also lost plenty yeah too, but they, okay they had much. a weird first regional and then they mostly dominated yeah uh, okay hey hey also i tried to i tried to get us correct last time no it was no peer happen. pressure me and i caved and well, look listen, at us we were wrong again <laughs> gaiman gladiators you guys should come on the show so that we start predicting them. <laughs> but you didn't they didn't come on the show. So nah, that's true. All right. So we talked about the 0 and 3 teams. Let's see what everybody thinks. Uh who everybody thinks is gonna go three and oh. Who has the hottest start, Michael? Let me take a guess. Tiger Nation, baby. Let me no, take a guess. NG <laughs> Mobile One Racing are going 3 0 and Team Falcons. Now I did my predictions i did my little sheet i know my boy adam core or not really my boy but in my heart he is is like kind of retiring from the sheets or something after the end of the season so uh, i hope listen brother let's take a little moment thank you so much you've done so much yeah. for this community big shout out to adam uh, you've core. made for content creation for fan engagement you're a legend man i whatever mm-hmm. you do next i hope you you love it and i'm sure there'll be other people that'll take on that responsibility lovely thing about the rle sports community is that we we were there for each other mostly. Wait, um, let me get this right, Michael. You have Team Falcus and Genji. So you have their oil and you have my oil. Mm-hmm. Call me George oh, Bush, baby. God. What well, an listen, oil I, I did my prediction sheet and uh I did have I had Genji going 
going 3-0, like un- unironically, like not as like a funny fan thing. And you know why I can prove to you that it wasn't a funny fan thing? Because I had them losing in the quarterfinals to BDS. Um, so the thing about this sort of thing is this is my prediction, okay? Gen G, they beat Secret, like 3-1, 3-2. Then they play Furia, so they get a double Sam first two, win, beat Furia, and then they get G2 in the 2-0 rounds. That's a free win. And so we're now 3-0. We haven't played a European team yet. We play a European team, we lose. It's the classic NA tale. Um, But anyway, uh, then Team Falcons, uh, I think they will... uh, Listen, there's some demons to be exercised against Space Station Gaming for the Twins and TRK, because they, all three of those players lost to SSG, specifically that boy, L. Jesus. Uh, last season, he dominated uh, the Twins at the World Championship with, like, like, I think he put up, like, a 1.8 rating or something. Had, like, 12 or 13 goals in just five games. Just turned Rawas into a Swiss cheese in that goal line. He was just slotting everything. Um, so I, I think that if they, if they can get that win and finally beat, uh, you know, the, the seventh best player in North America, which is big for Mina, um, maybe they can, you know, I think they'll, they'll carry that momentum into the 3-0 finish. I can see Team Falcons going 3-0. I even had them 3-0 in my sheet of the predictions, but I thought better of it. I definitely don't see Gen G doing it though. I have gentlemates coming in with all the confidence in the world as they should, and G2 going 3 0. Mm. Those are the two teams that I believe right now have the best chance of just racing through Swiss. Because they're going to get some tough matchups uh, in maybe the second round, I believe. Uh, Team Falcons might have to beat BDS or something, um, but we've seen BDS have slow starts before. It, it, it's just for gentlemates, this is where they need to show that it wasn't just Copenhagen breakfast. Uh, they can do it on a full English breakfast too. <laughs> they, they're the, the ones who have such a, like we've said so many times before, such a team-based play style that shines on LAN. And this is where I think they need to show that once again. And then G2 is G2, don't you think, Hoodie? I do. I've got G2 as well, and I have BDS, our top two seeds. And, uh, you know, I think they're going to take care of business in round one versus BDS got Mobula, and G2 has the Gladiators. So I think those are two uh, fairly comfortable victories, which should, you know, in theory, give them the most uh, desirable seed moving into the next round as well. Um, and, and of course, we'll, we'll carry on as long as they continue winning and take care of business. I think BDS, you know, you're, you're probably sitting there thinking, well, hold on, you're contradicting yourself. You just said they have the chance to underperform. And they do. If they find a, a team that is playing hot in the quarterfinals. Um, but yeah, I think those are the two teams that, I mean, it really just stems from, I think, that they will take care of business in the round one match, probably more comfortably than the rest of their peers, which, like I said, should should give them the ideal match moving forward. So, um, and, and of course, I think those are two teams that are in form right now. So those are my yeah, uh, the thing. My, my selections for the 3-0 and prediction. But uh, one thing I wanted to say, we saw two teams that, I mean, I would guess 10% of the community had predicted to go 3-0 and in the last major. So... It's like, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's something that you have these expectations, you have these ideas, you have these thoughts about who's going to be in form, who's looked good recently, who should be the three and O teams. And it doesn't always work out like that. So, yeah. And then again, you know, more, more evidence, Fury goes three and O and they, like Michael said earlier, they get Molly whopped in the quarterfinals, the only quarterfinals that wasn't very close. So as soon as you think, you know, something. Yeah. Those quarterfinals can throw off the entirety of Swiss doesn't even matter anymore. <laughs> yeah. So La- then... Last time we were on this yeah. pre-major show, what did I say? Sneaky 3-0 for Furia. So sneaky listen. 3-0. When I said there was a sneaky Hey, dude, they were, not, they were not sneaky. They were destroying everyone. <laughs> they were so good. This time, sneaky 3-0 for Ty. 
Tiger Nation. Baby. And, and then they lose okay. in the quarterfinals. Uh, okay. Yes, literally. I literally think that's what's going to happen. So oh. then what do we think of those semifinals? Who is actually going to stand mm. the test and make it through those quarterfinals? Mm. Will we see EU dominate the playoffs again? I got I say no. two. So go ahead. I say no. And... You know, a lot of my stuff you, you guys have figured out is it's very heavily influenced by storylines. You know, what I hope You're to a dreamer, happen. Hoodie. Y'all, y'all, may, y'all, y'all rewind. Y'all remember I was vouching for Team Rock. I'm vouching for uh, the snowman. The snowman. I, the I want these fun storylines. That's what I live for. I think it's so much fun. And, and we did talk about this back then, but we, we, I was probably spoiled by such awesome stories with Liquid and Queso and even Seiko and Zen. But I, I want to see it some more. That's so much fun to see new talent flourish or or new scenarios happen. And that is what I've been pulling for for the longest time. I want to see an international land champion, not from Europe, not from North America. And I want to see a top four that has one EU, one NA, one Sam, and one Mina. Ooh. I want to see it right here in London. And I think, I think it's possible. We saw some and good performances. And if there's one land... This might be the one. It could be the one. We saw some good performances from Falcons and Furia in the first event. I agree, Michael. They have been pretty silly lately. There's been some <clears throat> um, allegations about the silliness even. but um, I was so dumb. <laughs> that if you watch Furia, they, they throw That's games what they and they do, have no man. idea they're throwing them. That's what they like, do. Yeah. They play, like, Come on, they, they play the way that you all play on your alt account. That's how they play. <laughs> they, they, they have no idea. Hey, I don't what play on my alt account. <laughs> they, hey, you, I don't they, that. they don't know that this is for money. Like, if you watch them play, they have no idea. They think this is an in-game tournament. Like, this is not serious. So yeah, I'm but open. The, I'm open for the four region top four. It feels I'm, like I'm, it's I'm all lining lie. up for it. It, it is. It is hoping. And so I like I get it. But I've been hoping for it, and I'm going to keep hoping for it, and I'm going to keep predicting it because I want to see it. I think that would be such an exciting time for RL esports. Yeah, it is exciting, and it feels like it's all lining up for it. Unfortunately, you're wrong. Mm. Right, Michael. Yeah. What do we have? have agreed. We're gonna have two European teams in there, and then we have G two and Falcons. Yeah. Hey, I'm not yeah. upset with that. That's two chances for oxygen. Fifty <laughs> percent chance. As opposed That's right. to my one. Spots, teams. <laughs> That's right. Uh. Well, I, I don't have oxygen in there. I can tell okay. you that one. That that is. <laughs> that um. is gonna be gentlemates and BDS for me, but we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, my early prediction is BDS and Zen Esports will probably also be there because uh, he just finds his way into deep into these tournaments constantly. Yeah. So, um, But listen, where me and Jens agreed on the... Okay, uh, okay, okay. The, the, the top four. We also agreed on the final, the matchup. We mm. did. And in fact, all three of us have one specific team in the at least in the final yeah so why don't we reveal that team and then we'll say where we have them. three two one it's falcons. the team falcons, falcons. <laughs> nice job guys always on sync <laughs> but yeah listen i have this team as the runner up i know i said they were the team to beat and i do believe they're the team to beat but that means the team's got to beat them, right? That's what that means. I'm um, pretty sure. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I, I think that they're they're punching their ticket, top two. Um, I think that you know TRK, top two last time at the Copper Box, he's comfortable in this venue, and he's got two demon young players with him. So that's why I got them. Who's going top two, Hoodie? Oxygen, Who's baby. Making it all the way. They're stealing Oxygen. the KC spot. They're going to the grand finals. Now, they will fall. See, this is the, the part that Michael and I differ. I've got Falcons taking the dub. I would love to see them kind of redeem themselves. Michael kind of outlined it earlier where um, Falcons got into the grand final in, the, in London, in the Copper Box, and you know didn't do so well against uh, Moist. It was Moist at that time, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I think it is the redemption story. TRK, like you said, is back. He's got... Uh, if I may, a couple upgraded pieces around them. And you may. with that experience, I think this is going to be the time for them. They're going to take down Oxygen in the grand finals, but we're all going to be celebrating over here in the OXG camp because we go to Worlds. Yeah. 
Yeah, love it, love it, love it. Let's get Carmen Corp out of World Championship. <laughs> Come on, guys. We can do it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if we can, but we're going to try. <laughs> I do have something in common with Michael as well. Mm. And that is our Hansel, love. Smart. Our love for well the traveled. best team in North America. Listen. It's G2 Strides. <laughs> Listen. Listen. He did you know not, he did not me. want to do that. You know what they call me? What? Mr. Fairness. That's what they call me in Richmond. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that. Do they? they call me, they say, Mr. Fairness, you never let object you never let your personal subjectivity get in the way of, course of not. objective issues, you know? And while Nothing. I have fought long and hard, that Tiger Nation. <laughs> are the true NA1 team. Right now, there's no question. How much, Michael? How much? And guess what? It all comes down to one thing. Four letters. M O No. Oh my god. Mode. I'm gonna ban you from the mode. Oh. London mode. It is B mode. Listen. Beast the mode. Best there, there are players in this Not game. Mode. There are players in this game, only a few, that have the genuine ability to be the best player, the driving force on a land winning team. Mm. I would say there's only been maybe eight in the last three years that I would say have hit that level. Maybe yep. nine, right? You got your Zen, Monkey Moon, Seiko, um, Vatira, Atomic. I think even though he hasn't, I think First Killer has been one. I think TRK is another one. Mm -hmm. And Beast Mode is one of them, right? Yep. Yep. And while and, and I think what, what really helps G2 now is last split, it was kind of the Dan Mode show. But this split, Atomic has completely come alive. Atomic looks phenomenal. Um, and I feel like... They have a, similar to the Falcons, I feel like they're very similar. I feel like you have Atomic and, and Kaleers as these very uh, brash sort of forward players. You have your kind of classic carry style, second men midfielder type thing with Beast Mode and TRK. And you have your extremely mechy, gifted, counterattack, defensive-minded third, Rawas and Daniel. I think that they're both very well-rounded, but I think one, as we saw in uh, Gamers 8, one of these players has just this special second gear, the second mode, if you would, I that would can know. take his team and overachieve all the way to the win. He said it after he lost the Copenhagen major. He said, this is the worst feeling in the world. Mm. And when mode doesn't want to feel something again, he doesn't feel it. Ring it up for G2 stride. And they is so back. We're so back. <laughs> and G2 will win its second land of the open era tying BDS and Vitality. I feel like these are the three true orcs of the open era. I think KC is getting there as well. But it'll be really fun to watch as these three sort of legendary esports orcs now compete for that prize of that third open era land after this one. You know, I had the exact same scenario as you just described, but I saw that you had the same scenario that I had pulled out, so I changed it up. <laughs> And I believe in the Team Falcons redemption because that's what it is. Making Bro, you are such a hater. This is crazy. Making the grand finals <laughs> two London lands in a row mm. and making it happen this time. Listen. Without without Armand, but making it happen. It when, would be so when... special. We've all been waiting for that Team Falcons win. And this, yeah. I feel like everything's yeah. lining up for not just the top four, not just the top two, but maybe even so question, a victory. Question. Hmm. If the Falcons make it to the final and lose, yeah, we're going to have to start calling him TRK naps because he can't get it done. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> just wanted to make that joke i don't have any else. <laughs> uh, that's pretty good that's pretty good i gotta give it to you oh uh, no i'm kidding naps is actually one lands i kidding. i actually so, so, don't know who would take it there for the story i would love to see the redemption so no from eu Team final Falcons. that's i think the big thing here, but that is, is that, i think what we're both predicting here is yeah, is that because this never happened it yeah oh that's y'all that's y'all yeah, no, yeah, yeah you you're you're not I'm, me and Jens are predicting the first ever in rlcs history 
That's not crazy. In like land history, it happened yeah. in DreamHack when the Peeps played G2, but it's pretty spicy. In, in history. That is the spicy. First RLCS no EU final. That yeah. would be awesome. It's very, very spicy. That would but not hey. be awesome. I would be devastated, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So just to uh, just to recap, because we kind of bounce all over the place, my top two is Oxygen and Falcons, with Falcons taking the dub. Yin's top two is G2 and Falcons. He's also got Falcons taking the dub. And then Michael has Falcons and G2, but he's got G2 taking the dub. So, um, a lot. I mean, I think it's pretty cool that all three of us have that much faith in Falcons. I think that is kind of oh, what Yin's is kind of alluding so to there, scary. where it, it feels so like it's scary. lining up. You know, it feels like uh, they've been leveling up, and, and maybe, just maybe, they have hit that... Uh, that final gear that they need to, that final mode that they need to. But I want to talk we, about. We jinx them. We jinx them. They're going. I want to talk oh, about geez. the it's best over. player. Can okay. we all predict who will be the best player? Not the MVP because that's always sure. going to be from the winning team. Uh, we're just talking about the best player in the tournament. Michael. There's only one answer for this until future notice. The best player in the world is Zen. There are players that on a day will perform better than them i think drolly has been maybe the best player in europe yeah. uh, over the good. split but the problem is, is is similar to with justin with monkey moon with other players these players come and go right they go up they go down they they come up they have a great while then they kind of go down then they come back up and they go back down um i think about before the world championship 21 22 when everyone was like who's the best player in the world vatira trk or yan and then none of them won and monkey moon dominated everyone for a week right because he was the best player in the world it's players that peak and value them. and so it's zen zen keeps proving us we keep like jumping the shark on zen not being the best player in the world like, and then he shows up and he proves to us that he is still by far the best player in the world um i expect at least one more legendary performance from him i expect at least a couple really strong ones and I think once again, he's going to, like he has all season, drag his team to a much better exit uh, placement than they should have because he covers up so many of their issues as a team and individual. It's Zen. It's always going to be Zen. Well, Michael, if they call you Mr. Fairness, they have to call me Mr. Rightfulness, <laughs> Mr. Im impartiality, okay. Mr. Justice. Rightfulness. <laughs> Because I've got beast mode. Who I don't you've know been who hyping that is. That up all split and else. you're just missing out on call, calling in the best <laughs> player at the LAM. Because he I got, is I going got to mode step two. up. I got mode two. Who who? Mode. I, I don't know who that is. I'm talking about B Mo. B mode. Beast the mode. The Bank of Montreal, dude? What is that? <laughs> that what uh, is that what sorry, you're calling? Can we get some B Mo branding up right here so everyone can see what Jens is talking about? I am um, talking please about. Please put it here. In is that actually the call it that, Michael? It is a massive multinational bank, the Montre Bank of Montreal, BMO. They have that's, that's a London, a London name. office. There's a that's London a, office. They can go to the BMO in London and take a photo. That's a dope nickname for a bank. They Way should. too cool for a bank. There's a Mo museum in better. Düsseldorf that's called Het Jens Museum, which is very good. I, I have taken a selfie in front of that. Um, but I'm talking about the best player on G2 mm. and the best player in london will be beast mode because he's just been going off all splits and he's on a team that right now can make it happen we're predicting him two out of three at least right yeah to make it to that grand final if not the grand final it's going to be a semi-final g2 is just really strong and beast mode is the strongest player on that team right now yeah best player now there you go. for sure Odie. Hi, <clears throat> I have a uh, TRK, and I think this is uh, obviously it lines up with my major winner as well. And I think, but the thing is, I think it, it it's just a, it's a full story because we think back to the third major last year. We have Rule One, the Twins. They went top four with an incredible performance. We think back to London in the past. TRK top two, an incredible performance. It's just been building and building. And y'all remember before the first major, I just felt, I, I said that I felt this Falcons team is, is finally, they're going to be the team. We've, we've, we've believed, we've held faith, we've said we think they can do it. They've gotten close. They're, 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 they were building consistency with um, you know, higher level performances and, and, and better results, deeper into tournaments. And I think it is finally time. They have built a squad that truly can compete with 
the best in the world. And I think TRK is going to show and prove that he is the absolute GOAT from Mina in this event specifically. They're going to take home their first international win. And I am going to be um, thrilled because we finally have a champion that's not in a, an EU. Love it. Love it. Love it. We got Zen, uh, Zen, Beast Mode, and TRK as our predictions for the top player at the major. Why don't you guys drop your predictions down in the comments below? If you're watching on YouTube, let us know what you think uh, or who you think is going to be the best player at the event. All right. We've got uh, our recurring segment, Shift 16. Michael's giving you his. Jens has given you his. And now Shift Cast 16. Shift 16 is something else. Okay. Shift Cast 16. Excuse me. Uh, so this is my, my current take on the top 16, and, and we'll start from the bottom and head to the top. Let's now, I'm, I'm going to cheat a little bit at number 16 because I couldn't, right I, couldn't I couldn't decide. Uh, I couldn't decide. I couldn't decide. But I've got Rebellion and Jobless, and I felt like they were kind of like a mirror image of one another where they both had this outside chance. They both played pretty well in this final event, uh, probably better than a lot of people expected these teams to play based on their prior performances in the first two events or, or for Rebellion the rest of the season. Um, and I think they, yeah, I think they deserve a shot. I couldn't decide between the two of them, so I just threw them both here at the 16 spot. It's basically an honorable mention at this point. Yeah, yeah. Let's make it a top 15. A top 15. All right. So and in the 15 spot, I've got Twisted Minds. The Mina 2 seed. Mm. Number 14, I've got Team Secret. The Sam 2 seed. Number 13, I have OG Esports. And I do, uh, you know, I do want to go ahead and just throw some explanations in here and there as we go. Um, yeah. OG's recent success over Rebellion and their victory over Gen G has inspired me to bump them up a couple spots. I think if they had not gotten those wins, I probably would have had Secret and Twisted Minds over them. But um, they've shown some prowess here lately, so we got to give some credit there. In the number 12 spot, I've got Power. Absolute domination in OCE, six for six. It, it, you know, to me... I think it doesn't matter the region. If, you're, if you've done that, you deserve a pat on the back. SSG is going to take our number 11 spot. I think that is the uh, third strongest NA team. In fact, I think they're like hot on the heels of Gen G, who's been kind of up and down lately. Number 10, I have Luna Galaxy. And this is definitely a surgence from this... <laughs> <I'm> sorry, I can... <laughs> definitely a surgence from this final event here. They, they really just look the best they have all season. Atomic played freaking insane, dude. He went he was crazy. crazy. Uh, number nine. Now, I I'm going to go ahead and say from five to nine, I think is probably the most controversial portion of, uh, of this. Uh, number nine, I have Carmi Corp. They've just been too inconsistent. I still think they have just as high of ceiling as anybody in the world, but they've been too inconsistent for me to move them up any higher. Number eight, I have Furia. Very similar sentiment. They dropped the series to, like Michael said, a team that hadn't even been in the playoffs. Um, they also lost uh, the second event of this split to uh, ninjas. So we've got them in the eighth spot. I've got Gen G in the seventh spot. Again, a couple of top eight exits um, is undoubtedly an underperformance for them, so I can't move them any higher. Number six is Oxygen. Uh, we've got a second, a fourth, and an eighth over in Europe, and I think that is a little bit better than a 1-8-8 eight, eight for Gen G in North America or Furia with a 1-2-8. Was it eight? I thought it was third, fourth, but you might be Did right. Did they go fourth? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Um, a one, two, four. Yep. Uh, in Sam. Um, and, and I think also the teams that they lost to specifically erased is, is a pretty rough blemish. I've got number five is Mates. Number four, Vitality. Um, top three, I've got G2-3, Falcons 2, and BDS in the number one spot. It's a really good list. That's a you pretty know, decent. I've list. been having, I've been, you know, I'm having a hard time figuring out because I'm just, you know, ball knowledge is, is, is just always so imp it's it's inspirational, really. Cody. It's inspirational. But here's my question. I've got, got an got advantage power. though because we've got all these events now. Everything is concluded. You know, you don't have to worry about what's happening next week, and and we know who's going to major. So I've got, I, in my opinion, I just got a little unfair advantage over you guys. Okay. It question. does help. We're not mid in the middle of a qualifier. Somewhere. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Question. Mm -hmm. uh would you say that moist last split like the joyo ixa resi top 16 team in the world when they were playing i don't think i would have no okay 
I'm going to read you off Moist accomplishments. That's what. Top eight, Mr. Regional top four. What does that sound like? It sounds like Carmi Court. Team you have like at number nine in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, can I, ask a, I worked. Can I ask a question ahead, back to you? Did, okay. did that Moist roster have three straight victories? If your, I worked at Apple 35 years Did that years Moist ago, roster have, have a, software a top four at an international land? I don't recall. No, uh, can you answer my question, Hootie? If I worked at IBM 35 years ago, would you hire me to be a software engineer? <laughs> Today? What have you done for <laughs> me lately? Listen, lately? Listen, this is weeks. a problem that we it's have. It's been weeks. You hey, they beat, a the very, weeks. they beat a very strong oxygen team this weekend in six. Okay. They got a good win. So did Jobless. Here's my question. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay? <laughs> if this is an inconsistency problem, I brought the sure, pen up. Sure, sure. Because if what Carmine Corp did in mm-hmm. the first uh, split matters to where they are now, right. G2 should be number one because they beat BDS in the first split major. However, this is another classic case of Vatira favoritism. Every land Vatira <laughs> wins, he, every plays that, ninth, he, he's the favorite to win. <laughs> Even though he's won half on the regionals Anaheim. in Europe, ninth is fair. I have a question too, Michael. What is this Liquipedia watcher? No, 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 right no, here. No, no, can't no, you no, just no. see that Carmine Corp <laughs> is a very, very solid team and better than? Oh, well, Jokers. you know what? He's very, struggling, very he's solid. Struggling to find a problem. We gotta let it. I don't. I don't remember the very, very <laughs> solid teams. Uh, any very, very solid that miss regionals when they're supposed to be the best team in the world. Anyway, as I was saying, Are the ninth best. We do at the time. They were argued as the best team in the world, is what oh, I'm saying. Oh, yeah, and they weren't missing regionals then. Yeah, exactly. And now they're nine. So here's they're my thing. Them, here's fair. my thing. We give uh-huh. Vatira teams the yeah. craziest benefit of the doubt. Okay. He has sold many a LAN. He has sold, you know, he's always the favorite. He's always the favorite going into the LAN. Oh, we can't count out Vatira because he makes championship Sunday every time. Me, 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 me. Because he At got- what point are we going to start holding these this player accountable? For the fact that he has had a disastrous split. Disastrous. He's gotten maybe one quality win the entire split. They and now he's put his world positions. He, eight positions. That's not enough. I tell you that's what, not, Michael. He, that's not enough. I, I, I'm not backing them this major. I think they're, they're, they're not going to be in the top yeah, eight. Yeah, yeah. Funny joke, but they didn't make it. That's, <laughs> that's why it's funny, because they didn't make the land. A team that doesn't make land, ninth best team in the who, world. Uh, who are you putting over them? Luda Galaxy, they got a top two. Oh my God, Michael! Aiden. That's their first grand finals appearance. Carmi Court won half of these regionals this year. I don't care. Clearly, yeah, you don't clearly. care. <laughs> let's let's read off. Okay, they beat BDS, who just pooped themselves mid mid series twice, and they beat Vitality because Zen was trying like you know doing Zen stuff, and he got them way higher than they should. We were talking about does Vitality have to make a roster change? They were talking about is BDS cooked. <laughs> Okay, listen, listen. Look, I got him ninth, bro. The the best, listen, the best, this is supposed to be a super team, okay? This is supposed to be a super team built around this player, this this generational player. But Vitality had an off year. They have more points. You know what I'm going to say? Zen on if anything, year. Garmin Corp are off too low in Garmin ninth. <laughs> well, if okay, anything, so, oh, they're too it, low it, in ninth. It's fair. No. It's fair no. to have them in ninth. They've no. dropped eight points because I believe they were in second before yeah. they actually missed out, right? They, oh. We ranked them second. You, they've dropped eight points in the ranking. I got Space Station over them too. <laughs> I got Space Station That's over them too. That's what I was going to ask. If is it just anything, Luna Galaxy? Nine <laughs> is I got Space low. Station over them too. Nine you know is what? low. And you know what? Don't I'll, I'll say- see. Maybe I got power over them too, but I'll get to choose. <laughs> Because I actually get to see power play at the land, and Carmen Court will be at home <laughs> doing watch parties. So I don't you know. Need, what, I don't Michael, I think we we could we could probably get a show match between Carmen Court and Power. We could probably I get want, that. You know what I up. want? I want a show match between Carmen Court and Shopify Rebellion. <laughs> because I remember that big big man Rise couldn't beat two piece and Parth with Monkey Moon on his team. Okay. <laughs> So let's see. Let's run it back. Let's see. Let's see who's the real king of the copper box. How about that? We could do a best of seven. No, we could even do a best of nine, and it would be beaten 6-0. No, 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 no. Because you said the same thing about Shopify versus BDS last year. And what happened? 
And what happened? I'm telling you, these players, man. This guy. There's one. There's one. You know, it's like the Kendrick. It's like. It's like it's like the Kendrick Lamar. Don't, don't you do that. This was the shit. Don't you do that. Don't you do that. Michael, don't do that. BBL Vatizzi. Michael, don't do that. BBL Vatizzi is not Zendrick Lamar. Okay. There's BBL Vatizzi. <laughs> who has all the nice. There's all the, he has all the nice records and ooh my 26 <laughs> games was on this and then we got Cedric Lamar who actually has <laughs> done things Lamar and changed the game. Cedric okay. Lamar is absolutely insane. <laughs> I've had enough. I've had enough of this blazing because they're they have a big content. Bro, one blazing to be at night. Is too bad. Blazing at night is unreal. No, it's unreal. massive. Blaze. Okay, let's let's hear let's hear. Yins probably has uh, something he doesn't. He uh, wants to uh, poke at as well. It's, it's, it's a shame I'm not a moderator in the shift cast and only in the shift chord because this guy would be muted by now. He'd be muted. <laughs> yeah, sure, buddy. I've seen worse. I don't have a lot of issues with your list either. And neither does Michael, but I needed he needed something, I guess, to... <laughs> Oh, whatever um but let's 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 focus on so yeah I, I just can't it's That's impossible really uh, anyway twisted minds i guess 15th that's too low yeah that's too low if you have them behind power behind the galaxy even even though they played really well this weekend last weekend um I, i'm still not an og believer but uh, sure Twisted Minds, I feel like, is underrated on your yeah. list in general by the whole community. They are a solid team, and I would argue maybe even more solid than Rule One. I mean, at the at the major, that's not very hard because Rule One sure. kind of kind of blew it there. But um, I, I believe people had higher expectations for Rule One, and I think that Twisted Minds is actually the team. To make that happen so i would say 15th in the world is too low for them but uh, uh it's just me and and what do you think up to I'm, I'm not gonna yap any further what what up to oh um i would say i'd like, have them over power for sure and og probably like 11th or something okay yeah 10th, i think them versus space 11th. Station i think that's fair i mean that that that's definitely from power to twisted minds to me, felt difficult yeah, as far yeah, as where they, to place them. Of course, them. those are very, very close. Yeah. They're basically alongside each other. That, but I that, would, crew, I would say... that crew and then KC to Mates felt difficult. Mates, uh, Mates, not so much because they're reigning major champions. You can give them that right. nod, put them above everybody. Yeah. Uh, but Oxygen has been kind of up and down, and they're newer. Gen G has been up and down. KC, uh, KC and Fury are both up and down as well. Um, yep. So those are the two areas that I find most difficult. I also think. I think it, these top three would like be the most. This I think these top three of BDS Falcons G two not in that order, but those three teams. It's like the most consensus top three that we probably like ever get for a major. It feels like those across the board. I would everybody say last has, season, last season Vitality BDS Carmine felt very like oh much yeah like yeah this, sure where it kind of felt like there wasn't another answer right. But I think it's like that. This is the most consensus you can get was like this year and last year. Sure yeah. We'll see. We'll see. That's that's my uh, that's my list for the sixteen teams at the moment, and of course there are some other squads that deserve shouts as well. But uh, that's what we've got. Okay, next up is Not next up. <laughs> next up is the next up validating tour. And we talked about this a little bit last episode. We kind of gave our nominations and gave a shout to all the players that were next up uh, and, and had such wonderful seasons. And we are going to reveal our valedictorian for the 2024 season. Can we, uh, is there any way to get a drum roll maybe? The 2024 valedictorian shift cast next up is uh, Drolly. Hey. <laughs> Woo. To no oh, one's surprise. <laughs> Canada. We stand Real on guard. Elmer. Oh, that I actually started from the bottom. Oh, but. no, sour. Anyway, shout out to Canada. Shout out to once again producing a generational talent. We've done that a few times before. My North American goat, Drolly, has absolutely, uh, you know, he, from the first, you know, there's a lot of questions about him in the first regional. Can he 
you know, yeah. it's it's, it's yeah. not an easy, famously not a super easy fit for a lot of players with Monkey Moon. He demands a ton. It's not so much toxic as it is he demands greatness. Yeah. Uh, from what I know, and um, you know, he's stepped up. He's developed. He's even gotten better. And now I think he's a uh, serious, seriously in that conversation for top yeah. five. Uh, I mean, he 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 very quickly erased those questions. I remember I was yeah. at the very beginning of the season. I remember I said. Will the three on gentle mates, will they will they mesh? We know what kind of ceiling they potentially have, but will they do it? And then I remember saying, uh, would this BDS team click with Drolly being new? Is he gonna jump right in? And man, he did. I mean, straight away, it felt like there was no it felt like there was no transition period. I mean, he was just a top yeah. level player from the jump. Very much like a Daniel-esque thing where it's like, okay, he's up there. Like we gotta put him up there with the best players. And yeah. then we're just going. And it wasn't so much Zen where it's like, oh. Right. That's the best player in the world, but it was very much like like when He's Daniel in, joined SSG within the first event when they got top two, yeah. it was just like okay, that guy is one of the yeah. ten to twelve best players in the world, and I think he's only gotten better since then. Which is insane. Yeah, I, I mean, we we have been so spoiled with incoming talent and how you know yeah. I've outlined it earlier, but these these guys they just they just immediately make a huge impact wherever they land. It is so impressive. Yeah. Totally. And we already knew, and, and every pro player knew that Drali was going to do well online. Online, offline yeah. is a very different story. That That's what most of the concerns were about as well, coming into the season. And in Copenhagen, I mean, the quarterfinals were rough against G2, but otherwise, well played, well done. He's just a solid player from the start. And yeah, yeah that, that's really, really impressive. Yeah, I mean, I think... To me, what I think was the culminating point of his season was the final qualifier against Endpoint, where it was just a wacky series. It was very strange. Yeah. Um, it was. It didn't feel like something where they like should have won, should have lost. It just it was one of those ones where it felt like anything could happen. Put up a one point five, right? Yeah. In, in in a you know crucial point, they deferred to him. Right, they said, "Okay, we need our young young star to dominate at 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 the highest level in order to squeak out a win that we shouldn't get." And he's and he did it, and that's what superstars do. Superstars win you series you shouldn't win. Um, and I think to me that was sort of the. Also, I also want to point out the fact that you know Michael, uh, excuse me, Yens pointed out the quarterfinal exit, disappointing. And then they come back and they lose again in the quarterfinals to resolve a team that they just should not be losing to back at home. And what do they do as a response? You know, they don't cower. They don't fall away from the, from the moment. They don't get tilted and, and, you know, hang up another poor performance. They win two back-to-back -back events. You know, that shows a, a mental fortitude. And like Michael said earlier, um, you know, the team demands greatness and, and he has delivered immediately. So, all right, next up, we're going we're to talk about this DDoSing stuff. So, if you are not on social platforms, maybe you just keep up with RLCS uh, on the mainstream. You may not have only, seen about this, uh, but DDoSing has become a huge issue in high-level lobbies. And I mean, maybe it's an issue with at all ranks, but we just don't feel it because there's so many of us. Uh, but at the top level, you know, these pros and and uh, you know, 2K plus ranked grinders, they all just run into each other all day long. So um, when you have DDoSers up there, I mean, they're, they're ruining hours of gameplay at a time for for all the players that are trying to queue and we've been seeing it what two weeks now two weeks straight yeah. or so i think oski tweeted at the rocket league account which announced something today about dlc or something and and oski said five of the top 10 players are ddosers uh on the leaderboard yeah. Ar arsenal also said that he's not playing the game until it comes back i mean like i don't know if i guess held up on that but yeah i mean i i mean jeez i don't know i mean what what a t I don't know enough about this to even like really comment yeah, on it. So, so DDoS means denial of service attack, which yeah. is a way to basically send lots and lots of signals to a server so it, it gets overloaded and it basically shuts down or it, it doesn't function properly anymore. Yeah. Apparently, that's not exactly what's happening. Okay. But everyone just calls it DDoS sure. because that's a term that's been yeah. around for decades and everyone knows what, what it kind of entails. It just means server kind of gets blocked gets put yeah. offline basically by yeah. someone attacking it and that is what is happening there is some way to influence the connection between the server and the players uh, it's it's basically a, a kind of cheating 
but instead of making you shoot better or drive faster, you're just turning the server off to a certain extent. So there, these players are asking the the actual legit players if they want to just give them the win, and if they're not going to give them the win, they're just going to turn off the server and make the the legit players lose their MMR, basically, and, and gain from it. Which... How... How do they go about fixing this? Like, what? Do... Well, so it, I, I know a lot of people. Are, whoa, I know a lot of people have been trying, you know, kind of reaching out. Like, we need to fix this. This needs to be prior. Blah blah. blah. From what I know, just from watching other games where this has been an issue, specifically battle royales, it's always been a big issue. Um, it takes a while. Like, it's you have to figure out how they're doing it. Yeah, uh, and then you have to figure out what enables. You them to do it, and then you have to you know shut it off on like a kind of a game wide, which is a lot of users. Oh. Um, what I'm worried about is this becoming the beginning of something more. And I'll give you an example: is that Apex Legends, one of the only other esports that I follow. I don't follow it as much as I used to. Good esports. I was really into it. Very good esport. I think the best BR esport by a pretty wide margin. Um, I know there yep. aren't that many. Anymore, I agree. But yeah. So they've and you always can watch had oxygen videos. in its hoodie. Yes, mm. they got a, two Canadians on their roster actually. Hey. Cool um, but uh, there has always been DDoSing issues in Apex high level lobbies, um, and EA never did much about it. Their EA respawn obviously is not a massive studio, so they don't have time to work on all that stuff. They're pumping out content for the overlords, um, and it led to. In a regional final, North American regional final, which is NA is still very good at Apex. Uh, yeah, like you're talking about, about pretty recently, right? Yes. So this was like about two weeks years ago. into these DDoS issues. Uh, a, a hacker was actually able to, who had been working on their I guess DDoSing and then their hacking in general, able to hack into professional players' Jeez. accounts mid tournament, install cheats, install oh, aimbot no. in an attempt to get Holy them. Yeah. Uh, banned yeah. for life. So these were included the two of the most famous Apex Legends players, the most famous Apex Legends player of all time, Imperial Hal, who plays on, he used to play on TSM, he plays on Team Falcons now. Um, but he installed a aimbot into Hal's computer mid-game so that when he started shooting, the, the team oh, would come online. Yeah. I saw this, yes. okay. And then this, yeah, it also crazy, happened with Jen clip. Burton, who is another member of he was playing for Dark Zero at the time. Now he also plays on Team Falcons. Yeah. And they both had to leave the lobby. They still don't have their accounts back. Their accounts are permanently compromised. They had to get new accounts. Um, I don't know if they got their items back or anything. Yeah. So what I worry about more than just the simple DDoSing right now is, is it a priority to the level that people who are doing it are succeeding enough to start to try to do more stuff within the client? Because I don't want to see Vatira's car start getting controlled by someone else mid-match right. in an RLCS final, right? Um, and we, we, I, I don't know that much about tech stuff, but right. I'm not going to pretend well, we, I do. But it's, it's a valid scary. concern because we've definitely entered the era of like cheating and, and mm -hmm. you know messing with the server or messing with the game because I mean, you remember for the longest time, everybody was like, well, Rocket League's great because there's no cheating. You mm -hmm. can't cheat. And now here we go and, with yeah, the, the, entering the bots, you know, changing like... Um, the the like visuals that you can get on your side um and now I will obviously say, though, the, the, the ddos or, or whatever it exactly is um i would like to see someone try to get into an rlcs lobby and start driving around one time on land just because it would be kind of like a streaker was on the field a streaker you know, <laughs> like, you know in like soccer matches when they run on yeah. the thing like seeing like a silly scarab like driving around they have to stop the match and like i mean we, we've had it happen in online tournaments yeah. yeah, where where players I guessed guess the, the password or or got the password that would leak somewhere. Yeah. We've had that happen. So we that had would be kind of funny. That's the only that, that don't do it if you're that, please do not do it. But like that would be kind of funny. That would be a funny thing. Uh, well, yeah, it, I mean, it is geez. pretty funny to read like Reddit posts from renowned redditors. Like the, this is a mod from the RLA Sports Reddit, if I'm not not mistaken, who says four years ago cheats like aimbot don't work because it's fast-paced physics simulation sure buddy sure buddy <laughs> sure buddy yeah we just hadn't got there yet or the the, the people that are yeah you know i, I don't actually to... know what kind of anti-cheat 
for Rocket League has, if it has any? I mean, you have uh, VAC, I guess, right? For, for yeah, Valve anti-cheat, you have Easy anti-cheat, which is EA's system. So that's Epic what... Epic have one? Like for their launcher? I, I don't think... for You mean for Unreal Engine? Yeah, sorry. Um... I think they usually use easy anti anti cheat, so the EA's product. But I I don't actually know. I'll look this up. We'll we'll get back to this next episode or something. Mm, okay. We yeah we definitely will. We'll, I mean we'll keep up to date with the DDoS situation and yeah. how it unfolds because it's you know it, it's something that obviously impacts high level and, and professional play. Um, even yeah. if it is I, just I feel their like practice. I feel like one thing that could be done is what i've seen people like pros complaining about is actually taking direct action against the accounts on the leaderboards mm -hmm. that have gotten there by right. cheating basically yeah. yeah because that's what what it and what it comes down to right it what might rate? not fix the but wider issue it might still mean that it's possible to ddos and to get Legit players at high rank disconnected from their server and, and losing losing their games. But at least it takes away some of the incentive, yeah, namely yeah. getting your name up on the leaderboard, whether it's to advertise stuff or just to brag. Um and it it might just take the worst offenders out as well, right? Yeah. Because they're the ones getting their accounts all the way to the top. And that's something yeah. that is an easier fix, I can imagine. Than sure. actually going into whatever anti cheat you need to fix to to make it stop completely, because that's something you've seen people complain about that isn't happening enough, right? Those okay. people, those accounts, DDoSers get to the top of the leaderboard and stay there for a while, and that should not happen. No. Mm -hmm. no I, I, what rate do you think people who cheat, if they just keep getting banned, continue to do it versus just give up? Like 50%, 40%, 60%. Who's really that dedicated? I mean, it's you know, always... Oh, the the thing is, they're, they're making money on it. Right, true. They're, you know, they're, there's an there's a incentive. It's similar back to back in trading with the scamming. You know, there's, there's a reason that they're doing it. It's not just for... Not just pure chaos. There's, there's, there, I mean, there's people who are making, making money by doing it. Sometimes not even. I believe in the, in the Apex Legend case, it was literally just someone who... Put it all online for free. Well, he was like famous. Crazy. I'm pretty sure he was like a fame. So I think he was getting off on the clout. Oh, I, I I just say that because I I know someone that knows someone that bought this thing that you can this program for DDoS okay. or whatever. Yeah. Report yeah. him to the police. The police. <laughs> FBI. Uh, I, I he was um, CIA. Yeah, like I say, it's, it's, it's a friend of mine that. It's somebody he knew from college, mm -hmm. and he, I mean, he was shocked, too, because, you you know, I don't know. You just don't expect somebody to, that you know, I it's don't know. It's just a game. Yeah, you and it, it just feels like it's pure sabotage, too, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but. But anyway, on a lighter note, let's talk about some speed takes, okay? Okay. Let's lock in. We got six of them, as always. I'm going to fire a couple off to start. Yes. Ooh. If Zen and Vatira don't win Worlds this year, they'll team up. Yes or no? Um, no. I think we're dealing with two organizations, Team Vitality and Garmin Corp, who actually know what they're doing. Right? We have a lot of teams in Rocket League where the players have all the power and basically if they it doesn't matter if their contracts still last for two years. If they feel like they don't want to play anymore on that team, they're just not playing on the team and they get benched or loaned out or just bought out, whatever. I feel like Vitality know what they have, which is Zen, Zendra Lamar, some might say. <laughs> and they're not just going to let him go. Uh, I believe Zen's contract is at least until the next year. Um, I just saw this earlier and now I forgot already. But I think it's 2025. Yeah, it's late 2025. So 
that's that's something you're dealing with, right? Fatality yeah. is not gonna let him go before. Oh yeah, that buyout. And I'm, that's a fat buyout. That that's gonna be the, one of the biggest in the Rocket League. Oh, the biggest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, probably the biggest. I don't, I don't know. Comic or or some some of the American orcs have some extremely high buyouts for no reason. Um, but yeah, this is gonna be extreme. Maybe not uh, monacy levels of extreme, but still yeah. extreme. On on this question of Zen and Vatira teaming up, it feels like it's something that gets brought up all the time. Do you think that those are players that want to play with one another? I never I think, used to think so until I think now. So. I think yeah. I, I think I think Zen would have always been up for it. I think Vatira had this whole thing about how he wanted to be the best. I think he'd do it now. I think he just wants to start winning it again, and he's won one one land in the last year and a half. And I think, and, and then for, uh, furthermore, do you think that? Do you think that's wise for them to team up? I feel like for their stints of, of their careers, they've done very similar things on their teams that they play on. I think I Vatira think has always needed to be a... Like, I think every time Vatira's won, he hasn't been the best player on his team. Like, in the moment, I should say. Sure, but both of them be... seem to have a more uh, cautious... They're, they're, they're not full off the chain like Ato. They're not jetting up field. I think do and... it. I huh? genuinely think Zen could morph his game. I think they could he both of be them. the best in the world. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't disagree with that. I, I've long taken the stance that players don't have to always be the same role, mm -hmm. um, but I do think when you have a good organic fit, that things just mesh quicker and better. I think that's been a big part of Oxygen success this this time. Is Archie wants to play Back, more yeah. cautious and behind the well, other I mean, two. Even with Vitality last year, right? Zen fit in perfectly there. It's a great, yeah, exactly. It's Dostin a great fit. Just wanted to go, and Alpha's yeah. always been a second. So that 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 I guess is where I'm 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 curious because I like I understand obviously Vatira is super successful, Zen is super successful. Put them on a team, you know, that just is like community. I think they want to. I think at I least think Vatira, to. Vatira would like to team with Zen. Yeah. Um, of course, Vatira is really just close with Carmen Corp, the Oric, the fans, right. everyone there. Um, Zen to a certain extent also with Vitality. Mm -hmm. Because when Zen came into the scene, right, people were saying like, oh, is it, which org is he going to? Uh, is he going to get a lot of offers from different orgs? But it was very clear that Zen wanted to go to Vitality. That was his dream org. And he got a great opportunity there. Yeah. Um, but I feel like if they've been playing the way they've been playing Zen now for two seasons, then there comes a time where yeah. the switch like uh, sure. is on the table. So, yeah, I feel like Vatera would want to play with Zen. I don't think Zen would be against it. Uh, and I think it would work as yeah. a team, whether yeah. you put Ato or Alpha or whoever in a third there. Yeah. It would be great to see. But if it's going to happen in it would be exciting season, I'm not... I'm not too sure about that one. So I'm I'm gonna say not no for 2025. Hoodie. Mm-hmm. Luminosity. This one, sorry, the last one was from Mop. No, sorry, the last one was it was, was from Grand Blue. I forgot to say it. Great name, Grand Blue. Blue. Grand Blue, yep. Grand Blue. From, uh, a little one piece reference, I believe. Um, but this one's from Ethan. Ethan. Shift shifter shift quarter love Sam says luminosity at their current split two form or like their split two form would not have been a top six team in South America. I think that is incorrect. I think they would have been a top six team. I think for a couple I, reasons. One, I, I think, um, I mean, I think they're of similar caliber. You know, maybe they wouldn't be at the top of that six, but I think they would match up very well with that five, six, seven area in, in Sam. But I also think what Luminosity does as a team would probably work really well against Sam. Mm -hmm. um, you know, catch them in a couple demos and some of these Sam teams that play very aggressive, very ambitious. You know, now you're very out of position because you have a player deleted. Um, and I think that could work pretty well for Luminosity. So I, th I think they would, I think they'd be a top six team in Sam. Totally. All right. Totally agree. Michael. Up. I've got a take from our dog. Not our fark, our dog. No team has had a more heartbreaking past two years than Space Station Gaming. Okay. So if we're looking at what is it? We're in June. Quite a statement. Two years. 
we're in June. So that would go back to basically spring 21, 22. What was that? Right. Was that? That was uh, London, first London. Yeah, well, so that's, that's Daniel. London. Daniel Rettles Arsenal. Rettles Arsenal. I think if you're looking at the, iter- if, if we're talking about the iteration between basically when Daniel joined till now, till now I think yeah. you got a really good view. Because you look at winter major. Yeah, I agree brutal like brutal. a weird save that like some people think that the game broke that should have been a demo i don't think so but um and then to the you know the famous rattles hard the cheat, kickoff arsenal Oof. go get boost i don't know how that happens in that moment but you know it's still happening moment, for other teams too yeah and then you have you know they go to worlds they have a really bad thing at worlds arsenal gets sick and then their team explodes literally explodes you have yeah. The two biggest faces at that point, I think, in terms of publicity at NA Rocket League, yeah, openly, well, one accusing the other of, you know, going behind his back and telling everyone he sucks and they wants to kick him. Mm, um, that was they ugly. come back in, they add LJ, right? And it's supposed to be, listen, I know it was a rough go, but they got LJ and Daniel and Arsenal. Like, they're a top three team in North America. Doesn't work at all, right? Uh, they they do okay in in the first split that they, they kind of they just fall out of it in the second split. By the way, I was looking at it because I was when I was making this. It, you had to be so ass to not make majors when it was five spots. They were twelfth, eighth, twelfth, and almost made the major. That is crazy. <laughs> to me. Um, but anyway, um, yeah. So then you have Daniel leave. You have Chrome leave. You think it's over. They finally get something nice happen to them. Hoxer joins after what? two and a half years of not winning a, yeah. a regional. They finally make another regional final. They lose, but not even that. In the upper final of that tournament, they were, I think, winning or tied after going down 3-0 in game seven against Furia, and they all committed and Yan scored an open goal, and they lost. I remember that. I was in Montreal, actually, when I was watching that. I, I think um, the fact that you have all of this in memory is, like, great supporting evidence to how devastating this has been there are almost every split i think since that original one there is one backbreaking moment yeah i honestly do think that the last two years bds probably has been really rough um if you because they, they won they, the world championship and things they ha- that's really what i was gonna say they've got some redeeming moments where L- uh, yeah. lj space station doesn't really have too yeah many redeeming but i, I moments. think ssg i think is the organization that I believe gives you the most simulation of an actual professional sports team. Yeah. Where you are constantly being heartbroken and you never win and it's awful, yeah, but yeah. they keep you going enough yeah. to want to do it. I had to finally break away when they added Chicago. I was just not a fan of the move. I thought they should have picked, tried to pick up Justin. Yeah. I know they tried to, something happened, but um, yeah, I, uh, I would I would agree. I would agree that Space Station gaming fans mm-hmm. have it worse than everybody else. They are yeah. truly the New York Knicks of uh of of the RLCS. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Hoodie. It, yeah. Sorry, what's up? Nothing. I was just I, all I was gonna say is uh, I, and I'm not a big sports fan, but everybody around me in Arkansas, we don't have a professional sports team, mm-hmm. but our biggest university is University of Arkansas. They play in the SEC. Um and all of their teams are like good enough to get excited about and cheer for, but they're never good enough to like win anything. So everybody just constantly remains heartbroken. Yeah, that's what it is. That's all, that's really what it's all about in sports, you know. Hoodie, yo, from Mop, who says this will be the weakest EU will we will ever have seen at LAN relative to the competition. Um, I I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I I can understand like KC missing, so they think that things are a little bit weaker. But I I don't think so. I think um, the reality is we still have four teams that are capable of winning. I'm not saying that we're going to predict that. We didn't predict it last time either. And the team that we wouldn't have predicted is the team that won it. So, you know, I, I think it's really not all that much different than what we've had consistently in the past. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we, we kind of have predicted EU to be weaker, at least at the very top, because we predicted that we wouldn't have European teams in the grand final. Yeah, but well, like, we look did. at the look at the worst European performances. It's like in LA, there was one European team in the top six in season seven. 
there were there's one European team in the top four. There's yeah. no way you think this crop of European teams yeah. is going to perform to the point where well, there's only one in the top. Four. They they also have I an mean, advantage of like sending one less what? team too. Like yeah, also, who do you literally said it was going to be one in the U2. So, look, I, I get it. I, you know, everybody still feels like Carmen Core is way stronger than Oxygen. I, 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 I've, and not me. frankly, frankly, that's a fair opinion. I'm not even mad at it. But I don't think that Oxygen is just like way off the mark. I don't think Luna Galaxy is way off the mark. I think, if, you know, if that would have been the team to go, I still don't think this is the weakest crop. I mean, it's Vitality, General Mates, and BD, BD, this is the best BDS has looked with this iteration it's, of the roster all season. I definitely don't yeah. think this is. Uh, I definitely don't think this is the weakest EU um, no. candidates. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so we got who, who needs one? Yens need one. And All right. Well, we'll one. give you an easy one here uh, from Colt. BDS are the favorites in London. Oh yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah. They got it. Yeah, be. I mean, <laughs> you don't have them in the finals, right? Because <laughs> I right. I called an underperformance. It's all, I mean, come on, it's all there. There is two teams that are very close, and that's yeah. the two teams had in the grand finals. That is G2 and Falcons. But um, this so is just... So you think that it's just going to be that BDS will play one of those two teams in the semis and lose like a really tough series? Yeah. 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 So. yeah. I think or, Adam or, going or even quarters. Game seven in my prediction. But yes, um, it's tough to say that they're going to win the event, but they are absolutely the yeah. favorites. Mm -hmm. They are the strongest team coming out of the strongest region. And there's not much else you can say about that. Yeah. yeah. Mm, was that it? One more for Michael, I believe. Or... Oh, yeah. yeah. One more for Michael. Okay, well, this is from Reese, the Reese dog. Uh, there is no NA player that would improve the G2 roster uh, in a roster change. Like that is the three that you would I don't assemble. Think the three best players, but I think that there isn't like a one of one move you could make that would. Make Can you get closer? Them... What you say at the beginning? Sorry, um, I don't. I I don't think they're the three best players in NA, but I really? do think I don't think there's a one to one swap you could make where the fit would be better. If that makes sense. Yeah. Because yeah. we don't really have like a rise or like a, sure. a Seiko or like a sort of like. Hey, we got like Dan and Beast Mode, or like Beast Mode and Atomic, or Dan and Atomic. We need like a real role player -y third. We don't have like an elite, elite one of those. All our top players are very much offensively minded and like stars, so to say. Um, so yeah, I would agree. I, I think, you know, I think First Kill is probably better than one of those three. Okay. I think LJ, you could argue, has been better than one of those three. Um, but I don't think putting LJ or First Killer on the team over one of those would make them markedly better. I think they would either stay the same or get a bit worse. And I think we usually think about replacing Atomic um, when we think about this just because he's older, because for some reason that's a crime in esports. Um, in Rocket but, League esports. Yeah, Rocket League esports, my fault. But I would probably still put... I don't think like First Killer would be better than Atomic in the role that he's in. Even though I've always thought First Killer would be a phenomenal first man, he's not. his tendencies don't move that way. And I think LJ is a second man... And him and Daniel didn't work. I think they'd work better yeah. now because I think Daniel's a better threes player now, but I don't think he'd be better than Dan is with Atomic. So And yeah, earlier on think. in the episode, you've been telling us about how Atomic became a better player this split. He's been unbelievable. And yeah, you know has. what? You watch those comms videos and he's really starting to like kind of assume that oldest elder statesman role yeah. at like what, 20 years old. But still, like <laughs> you can tell that he's kind of growing Geriatric. into like feeling yeah, feeling confident about being the vet. He's, right. Yeah, he's also the longest standing G2 member too. Like him and yeah. Seth, you probably have plenty of tenure or, or rapport yeah. with one another. And, so. and, and we spoke about this a few a few episodes ago, but the value of a player-coach combo is that the player kind of sets the tone for the right. culture that the coach, mm -hmm. like the player, the coach speaks through the player and then you avoid the issue of the players not respecting the coach. And I think you can tell Atomic has taken that role of like, hey guys, I won a major, I made a world's finals because I listened to Sathew. We're going to do what he says. We're going to play the way he wants to play. And it's had incredible results. Yeah. Yes, it has. G2, uh, a team that is alongside Falcons and BDS, it seems as though the community is a consensus. We're expecting two of those squads to be in the grand finals. Mm -hmm. I am hoping that's not the case. Hoping for the Cinderella run. 
I mean, well, if it's going to happen, it'll happen. Obviously, at the on a personal level, of course, that would be so much fun to see my team do well. But I, I, I really do think if you were to like zoom out, I think a lot of the community would have fun with it as well. I know that there are going to be a lot of fans that are devastated and I have KC at Worlds were that hypothetical scenario to come true. Um, but uh, it's a fun storyline. It's something that, I mean, frankly, it would just be insane. I mean, it would be absolutely insane because, there, there, I mean, I Ian said it, you said it earlier, it, it's definitely not expected. You know, yeah. I, think, I think it's fair to say that expectations for Oxygen are probably around that top eight area. Um, they've been solid in this second split. Uh, but, uh, you know, a grand finals appearance would just be unbelievable. So I'm is cheering it the for only, it. Is it the only uh, result that changes something for a world's qualification? No, right? That, and then you got your OCE battle. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. Uh, actually, and Sam. Sam yeah. as well, and right? Sam, yeah. Uh, Secret needs to go 2 3 to get one. So world you got spot. Secret and OCE, or Secret and Chiefs um, for Sam and OCE. They need to go. Change. And they, they both need the same thing, right? Round five? Yeah. Wow. No, he, so, yes. But uh, actually, but there's the another Chiefs, one. Sorry, but for the Chiefs, they need to make round five. For Team Secret, if they make round four, it triggers a tie break between them. And oh, them. okay. Okay. There's another so, one. Yeah. Team Mobula needs to get to the grand finals to make worlds as well. Mm, we'll be looking out for that one, Jens. I'll be keeping a tab on that one for sure. <laughs> I know you will. Look, I got some you hopium will. for Oxygen. I don't have too much hopium for, for Mobula. Goody, I have a question. Yeah. When you go to the next Oxygen uh, headquarters meeting that you have every week or so, you know, yeah. when you guys go to the lair, um, yeah. can you ask them if they'd be interested in putting the three lions patch on the oxygen jersey for this <laughs> thing? The, I think it England, would help with crowd. The England national football symbol. Yeah. Dude, I, I uh, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely pass right the message. Here, right, right here. That, that, that's another layer to the story. Like, Joy O back to the copper box the, is where he's British. won. It's, it's home full, for those players. Thing, yeah. I mean, there's so you, much listen. at play here. Um, it, you know, uh, I look. I don't want to get too excited, but it really does just feel like a script. <laughs> I'm not here to to you know give out free business ideas, but the Joyo Oxygen jersey with the three lions patch is free money. And when he once again makes some sort of history, you know who do you get a pay raise from? All <laughs> <laughs> was asked for like five percent commission. You'll be in Cancun. I mean, the, the slogans already the there Tom. as well. It's coming home. It's coming home, baby. Come on. That's awesome. Jeez. Hey, here's what I know. Whether it's Oxygen or Secret or Chiefs or whoever, I think we're gonna have some exciting uh, results. I think we're gonna have some teams probably, probably snatch away uh, a spot from either Pioneers or or Complexity or or even Carmi Corp. You know, it is going to be a really, really fun major. You need to be tapped in. We'll meet again next week. So we'll got, yeah, we got we some more content uh, coming your way before the major. Two more episodes to go. Before two more episodes. Oh, we got a special one for you next week. You got to tune in. We, we I mean, do we have a special one. Michael, sure have more Michael has been cooking up some, some fun ideas. Um, kind of the end of the season vibes. You know, we want to give some credit to teams um, and just talk about uh, the different performances and achievements for different players. So... Stay tuned. Y'all make sure to subscribe to the channel, follow, or whatever it is on Spotify if you're listening there. Y'all drop your comments below if you've got any ideas for off-season content or any thoughts about some of our opinions for today. We appreciate you tuning in, and we'll catch you next time.